this is what heaven looks like. <laughs> Thanks for choosing to watch the video and we're at Thornwood Fisheries to try a bit of fly fishing. Now I do love my fly fishing, I actually did it a fair amount for a few years before I started my perching. These days I only do it you know a few times each year and that kind of results in me being quite rusty most of the times that I try it, getting all caught up in my own lines and all that kind of stuff but uh, I do still enjoy it and this is a great pace to try it. I've had some sessions here that make me feel like I should be doing it some more. And this video is geared towards people who haven't tried fly fishing before at all. If you're an experienced fly fisherman, um, you might enjoy us watching us catch some fish, but don't expect to learn too much off of me. This really is a video that I wanted to put together to encourage people to give it a go. But before we get fishing, let me take you around the fishery. Thornwood Springs is a complex of lakes and pools situated on the edge of the Epping Forest. The fishing here is suited to both the experienced fly fishermen just as much as the beginner. Let's take a quick look at the lakes. Three Springs is divided into two parts, with one end practicing catch and release whilst the other end is catch and keep. This lake has lots of stunning rainbow and brown trout, it's apparently a bit easier than the other lakes and so is often the one where the coaching and tuition takes place. In complete contrast, the stalking pools are for the more discerning fly angler. Here you can target brown, rainbow, blue and tiger trout that grow to in excess of 20 pounds. And finally, there is Havering Lake, the one that we'll be fishing in this video. This has a stunning variety of fish including browns, rainbows, blue and tiger trout and my favourite, the slightly more elusive Spartic Char. I'm told that there are hatches of every insect available, even mayfly hatches can be abundant. Other facilities include a resident instructor, which is great if you're looking to try this for the first time. You can turn up, ask lots of questions and pick up any bits that you might need from the shop that's located on site. Hot food can be purchased on the bank, free tea and coffee, there's a barbecue and fire pit area, there's a comfy lodge with a log burner, a picnic area, on-site toilets and even a wigwam. I've put a link in the description to Thornwood Fisheries website. If you're looking for more information then please check it out. All in all it's a great place to drop off the face of the earth for a few hours and do some fly fishing and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. See if we can get one down there here to be caught. Oh, there we go, got one. <laughs> there we are. Just as I was saying it. I knew they was in front of us. There we are. What's that? Look, look at the old Ronco. Oh, Jesus, boy. He looks like quite a good one, Dan. He looks like quite a good one. Look at that. That was a little buzzer, that one. Taken, yeah. Oh, let's get the old net off the back. Oh, it's nice to get an early fish. Looks like a nice brown trout, actually. Or is it a rainbow? Oh, cool, it's crossing about a bit. <laughs> oh, the fish in 10 minutes is a bit lively. I'll get him back. Caught on a buzzer. Uh, yeah, could be a good day. I'll get him back. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Want to take a run, just let the line slide through your fingers. I 
Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Launched itself a foot clear of the water there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh. <sighs> brutal. Absolutely brutal. If you don't fly fish, come and try it. These fish really, really scrap. Quite unbelievable how they fight. Really do give it everything they do. There he is, in the net. Oof. So this one, you can see I've got my net here. It's still in the water, the fish is still in the water. Um, it's really important. It's really important when you practice catch and release that you get them back as quickly as possible. Hardly going to get him out on the bank. I'll just give you a quick show of him. There he is, stunning, stunning rainbow, and we'll slip him back straight away. That's it. Yeah, that will get you a fish all day long. Here we go. Did you see that? <laughs> Is this, is this making you feel a bit sick? Sorry, Dad. Yes, Dan! <laughs> Double hook up. Yes! I knew you were going to get one. I've got one on. Dan's got one on. This is epic. Are you getting on with yours, Dan? Like playing them on a bit of spaghetti as well, isn't it? They bend in half. Dan's just landing his first ever trout on the fly. As I bring in a nice rainbow too. Now that is excellent sport. Love it. Love it. I'm not going to bring him up on the bank, but you can see he's another decent sized rainbow. Practicing catch and release. Chatting to the owner, and we really have got to get him straight back, so there we are. I oh, know I've been given the responsibility of netting this, which I'm not very happy about. Do I salmon swoop it? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. Oh. I like your salmon soups, they feel safe. Oh, I know, he missed it. Oh no. Disaster. Stop messing about. He's going and going and going. Oh, yes, yeah. man, the salmon yeah. swoop, we got him. Right yeah. up, mate. <laughs> My first rainbow trout on the fly. I'm very happy with that. What beautiful fish. Whoa, let's put it back. <laughs> This one. <laughs> Got a buzzer on at the moment. I don't know if it's blatant enough for them. They seem to be hitting bigger flies like the damsel. fly back on. There we go. Oh! No! <laughs> Keep losing them. What's going on? <laughs> That's why is this not getting the fish? Let's just check the fly. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. I'm going to try down the bank a bit. More parallel with the bank, that one. Covering lots of spots. There we go, it's a fish on. Look at that, right at the bank again. Oh. Right, now stay on. That was again right at the end of the retrieve, just slowly gliding it through the water as I was about to pull the fly out. Always worth doing that. Don't just lift the fly out, glide the last bit. Oh, they're noisy. Always glide the last rod length or so in. And uh, that's definitely got me an extra couple of fish today doing that. Really hoping that we get a Spartic char. 
That would be amazing. We've had brown trout and rainbow trout. I really want to show Dan one of these char if we can get one. There's one pattern that's working for me and nothing else is, and that's that damsel. There we go. So I'm not even going to mess about with the camera for this one. We've had a few the same size. So let's have a chat about what you need to start fly fishing. The truth is, you don't need much. I wear a vest and it's got line, leaders, forceps, scissors, and of course flies. I've got a seven weight fly rod. It's nine foot six inches long and it's made by Grays. It's worth spending money on a fairly decent rod, I would say. The reel on the other hand, in my opinion, can actually be quite cheap. Don't worry about spending a fortune on a reel. Um, you know, most of the time I'm pulling the line off and it's sitting on the floor. So the reel is one thing I think you can save a few quid on. The one thing that you do need to spend good money on is definitely the line. Um, I bought a cheap reel. The problem with buying cheap reels sometimes is they come with cheap line on them. I did that, it was a complete nightmare. Spend a decent amount of money. You'll be surprised how much it costs, good fly line, but it is money well spent. So don't try to save money when it comes to buying line. I've got a floating line, an intermediate line and a sinking line. Today I'm using a floating line and that is mainly what I use, certainly through spring and summer. On the end of my fly line, I fit a braided loop. You can buy that in your tackle shop. And then I loop to loop a tapered leader. Again, get that in your tackle shop. It goes from quite thick line, this right down, tapers right down to eight pound. And on the end, of course, you tie on your fly. What will happen over time as you keep changing that fly, you'll be nibbling away at that tapered leader and eventually it will get too thick. When that happens, what I do is I just tie on a fresh length of line, decent quality fluorocarbon, you know, either use a grinner to grinner knot or an all bright knot or whatever you normally use to attach a length of line. Put on a few foot at the end and then reattach a new fly. If you want to appear to be a fly fisherman, then call this the tippet. And probably the most important thing, a tweed flat cap. Turn up on a fly fishery without one of these, not only will you definitely blank, but you'll look like a complete idiot. So that's all you need. Not much stuff, is it? And that's why I like it, I think. Uh, before you go out and buy anything, though, no, maybe just go somewhere local, uh, nearby, try and get some tuition, and, uh, but definitely, definitely give it a go. Like that, Dan. You see what I'm doing there? Look, he's got it. I talked you through that one. This is the albino one. It's been knocking around in these margins for, oh my God. I even talked you through it. <laughs> Look at this. I don't know, I think it's a blue trout. Incredible looking. Uh, look at this for an incredible fish. That is apparently a blue trout. I'm going to get him straight back now because they are quite delicate. Fantastic fish. Yeah, there we go. Fish on. Sorry, mate. But the problem is, even though I fished for them quite a lot for a few years, if then you start only fishing for them twice a year, two or three times a year, you lose it completely. Yep. That's another one. I'm right in the edge with him. I'll just quickly show you him. There he is. Had about a dozen of these. And there he goes. Another stunning fish. Oy, 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 oy. Oh, power on these fish is incredible. If you want some arm aching action, come to Thornwood. It's a fantastic fishery. You know, I've lost count of how many trout we've had now. Into double figures, I think I am now, probably. I've had brown trout, rainbow trout, blue trout and I'm hoping to get a char, uh, which I've had out of here before. 
hoping we can have one today. Actual arm is aching because of all this action we're having. Can't recommend it enough. Such, such fit fish. stripping it quick for fun come on there we go <laughs> whoa. whoa incredible stripping it really quick there wow oh no oh, Jesus Christ that is mental Stripping line quick, absolutely slammed it. There we go. Whew. So there we go, there's the average stamp of the fish that you can expect to get. Another nice rainbow. Get him going back quickly. Slammed it a slow of a tree that time. Absolutely pull your arm off these fish. It's just such good sport. I don't know how many I've had now, at least a dozen. Had some a great end to the river season and now having a great time fishing for these trout on the fly. Switching up the retrieve. Seems like sometimes I want it fast. Uh, if that stops then started to sort of slow it down, figure of eight it. There we go. So let's have a look at the embarrassment that is my fly box. Don't laugh. I'm only going to go through a few. That's a buzzer. Uh, I've got a selection of those. Always have a selection of buzzers. That's the one that's done really well on this session. It's a damsel with a little blue flash in it. That's worked well. Tiny little weighted hare's ears. Always done well on those as well. If it's warm and they're up on the top, the shipman's buzzer. And I've got a nice little selection of dry flies, which is probably one of my most favorite ways to catch trout. Something that makes people a little bit nervous about fly fishing, I think, is the casting. So I'm going to give you a few tips. I'm not, you know, I'm not fantastic at casting, I should say that. Um, but I'm just going to sort of give you a few tips that people have given me along the way. When you're moving the rod back and forth, when you get to the front, if you imagine a clock, if that's 10 o'clock, when you come back, stop it at 2 o'clock. So, you know, don't, don't move the rod in too much of an arc. Quite sharp, short swings, really. And what that does, that creates really quite a nice tight loop in the line when you're bringing it backwards and forwards. You want a, a narrow loop rather than a wide one because that, that a wide loop creates too much wind resistance. Another thing that you've got to do is put in plenty of pauses. When you go forward, pause. Wait for the line to unravel, back. Put in a pause. You're wanting the line to unravel completely before then you bring it forward again. Another big one for me was to use, you know, the hand that's not holding the rod, use that to inject speed into the line. It's really hard to explain, but as you bring the rod back, you're pulling with this hand to inject speed into the line. And then as you bring it forward, you're pulling it again. And that injects speed into the line and allows you to cast further. If you want to search for it on YouTube, it's something called double hauling, and it really will help you inject speed into the cast and help you get that extra distance. Just bear in mind, my casting isn't fantastic and I'm having a great time. So don't worry about it. As you've seen in this, in this video, you know, the fish aren't always that far from the bank. So yeah, don't sweat it, go and enjoy yourself, give it a go, have some fun. So 
so Dan had left us by this point, something about buying a house or something, some poor excuse, um, priorities completely wrong. Back to the fishing, will we get that Spartac char? itself out of the water twice now this fish it looks like it might be the char we're after it's definitely fighting different yeah I think it is I'd like to get this one incredible whoa, 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 whoa. This is insane. Let's have a look. Is it a charm? No, it's, it's just a rainbow, I think. It's just a very pale one. I thought it was the Spartic, but it's not. It's just another rainbow. But they are gorgeous. That is a very good rainbow trout. Let's put him back to fight another day. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's taking it. Right, I haven't had one do that yet. What on earth have we got here? Did you see that? Either it's just a particularly fast one, or it's big. That took up all the slack and then started to pull it off the reel. Insane. Why has it gone solid? Right, let's try a different angle. It's suddenly gone solid. Moving now. Right, it's moving again, I think. Yes, it is. Have I still got a fish on? Am I just pulling in a load of weight? Oh, I've still got a fish on. I'm having to come over because I left my net. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Went absolutely solid there for a second. Still don't know if it's all that big. Is it the char? I think it might be. And there he is, the one that we've been after, the Sparktic char. We got one right at the end of the day after a lot of trout. Let's get him back. It's stunning. I've got a very special clip coming up next. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Sometimes it's the environment in which we catch fish that makes them special. You know, the, the, the context, the, the, the atmosphere, the backdrop. I decided not to edit this next clip down so that I can share it with you in its entirety. It's a very special capture of a larger Spartic char taken the very next evening. Enjoy.
does it get better? Look at that sunset. And a nice trout on the fly. Oh, I don't know if it gets better than this. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Absolutely incredible. Slammed it as well, this fish. Whoa. This is what heaven looks like. <laughs> oh, incredible. It's like quite a good one as well. He's moving quite slowly, which worries me a bit. Is he one of the big ones? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. Did you see that? Oh, did he take off then? Oh, oh, look at the bow wave. That is incredible. Looks like he's got some weight, this one. Whoa. Flat rod in there again. Be a bit careful with this. Coming in towards me again. He's fighting different, slower, which makes me think he might be bigger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. into the edge and then he just takes off. Quite incredible. I want to make sure he keeps moving. So there's a bit of weed down here. Whoa. This really is quite incredible, you know. Make sure I don't stand on my own line. Especially because he keeps taking off. Oh, he's stunning. He looks like a good one. Looks like a good one. Oh, yeah, he's one of the better ones, I think. Gonna take it a bit easy here. Come on, come on, come on. It just keeps taking off. Spartic. Oh, he's decent. So I don't know how much of this you're going to see because it's dusk, but I've come back the next day and we've got a proper one. There we go. I can't keep him out of the water, but that is a really, really nice Spartic char. Stunning. I'm going to get him straight back. Wow, what a fish. If you enjoyed the video then please like and subscribe and all that stuff thanks to peter for having us at thornwood springs i hope the video has encouraged you to try fly fishing 
I'll definitely be doing some more of this before then maybe having a go at the tench. They'll definitely be waking up. Thanks as always for watching. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.